Debo is high on the list of guys that can miss practices and play, but given how impactful Debo Samuel was in the last meeting, he was 36% of the 49ers offense, mostly receiving. He only had two carries in that day. Um, and he scored one home run touchdown. One of the, maybe some, some claimed maybe the best touchdown of his career. Uh, this is significant. And the Niners talked a ton of shit as a result of, you know, on Debo's back. Like when I close, when I close my eyes and think of the 49ers beating the Rams, I envision a shitload of Debo Samuel plays starting with that one. But last year guy, he obviously had some incredible plays in that week 18 game. I mean, he threw a touchdown. Remember him taking over, just running the ball and him, the catch that he had on Jalen Ramsey on that final two minute drive. I, I, this would be a pretty, I understand they made a big trade and we'll get to McCaffrey, but it, it would be a significant loss. I even think an underrated thing. And we talk about like a, uh, I give Lewis Riddick credit on this one. I just saw his Instagram. I think he's on Shad Khan's yacht right now in London. That because he like hashtag yacht life on his oh, Instagram. Oh, because it is on. He's calling the game. Yeah. So the thing you learn in the NFL because you can look at a unit, you go, God, this guy's have the best offensive line in the league. You're two injuries away from an area of strength becoming an area of weakness. Like if Juwan Jennings is their third wide receiver, Debo's. You know, it's weird. Like. Is Ayuk at the end of the year going to have more catches than him? Debo's, you know, their best, most complete offensive weapon. And you remove those two guys. So you're all, you basically just have Brandon Ayuk. Who are their other wide receivers? Ray Ray then has Danny to play Gray. Yeah, Ray nonstop Ray. and Danny Gray. Really sweet. I mean, that's that gets pretty dire pretty quick. Because yeah. you'd say, well, when they start with Debo Ayuk and Juwan Jennings, you go, that's probably one of the better three man units in the league, right? Just in terms of their high end, yeah, I mean, and they've, and they've distributed pretty well. Um, now, obviously, George missed a little time, but Ayuk thirty two catches, Debo thirty two catches, Kittle twenty five catches. So how many catches know, Juice? Not, how many catches Juice have? Like 10, 12? Uh He has eleven catches on fifteen targets. You know what his per catch average is? Well, I would have bet point nine. I'd guess about nine of them have been for first downs, wouldn't you? Uh, that is very close. Seven of his plays have been for first downs. Yeah. Obviously, De Debo would be a massive loss. I think use check is not Debo level, but not he's fucking way more important. Juwan Jennings, if you was tell me Juwan Jennings well, missed the game, like whatever, I would say both. Yeah, I mean, yes, I agree. I'm not saying whatever. I'm just if I had to do a hierarchy, I would go Debo one of just the skill guys. Debo one juice to me would be a clear two over Juwan because of his impact as well in the running game. We'll go back to the Niners Rams game a few weeks ago. Use check and Jennings combined for three catches. Juszczyk had one for 35. Jennings had one for 10 and one for 12. So, you know, you're going to get three, two first down catches a game out of those two guys, like big ones, like third and eight, third and 11, right? It just happens every game. One from Jennings, one from one from Juice. Does it ever end? That's what I, I'm being serious. Like, what, does injuries? it ever end? Does do they ever just have like a five week, a month stretch where it's like, God, that was pretty healthy? Or is it just, this is just the Kyle Shanahan? Experience because you would say so far this is the Kyle Shanahan experience. Yeah, I don't think you can count on. I don't think you can go. Well, the football guy, it's going to correct itself because partly it's this. You know, if it's these players, it's partly it's the same players, right? Debo's had hamstring groin. Like this has been a thing with Debo before. You know, like when you're playing golf and just you know your ball's going a certain way, you're like it's just going right every time I hit. And then like you get to like the 13th hole and you just go, maybe this is the time I hit it down the middle. And then it just never goes down the middle all day. Like it does feel like that with the 49ers. Like it only goes down the middle on the widest fairway with no OB. <laughs> that time it goes down the middle. They would pray at the just now you could say the bye week's coming at a good time, but in a weird way, it feels like the bye week for the 49ers is pretty irrelevant when it comes to injuries. I'm not yeah, saying it hurts, but it doesn't like make them any healthier. I'll tell you the, the thing that hurts about the bye week is it feels like you might need the week that it's, I mean, it all works out in the end. So it's just a perception, but like, you can't, you know, we'll see what happens if they're three and five, like you can't take time off at three and five. You got to get back to work at four and four. Like, but anyway, Debo specifically, who knows? I, you know, I'd love to tell you, I think he plays because this game is important and Debo tends to play and you've got the, you know, one thing where the bye week does help you is, if you have guys that are a little banged up, maybe you try and push it a little bit. Hamstrings. 
But it's, you know, you don't want to hurt a hamstring worse and have him out in two weeks, but you really need this game. I remember the one thing I remember about 2020, besides the last couple of weeks when their entire team was in a box at the Arizona Stadium, like their entire team. <laughs> it was like, that's like their starting lineup was just in the box, all injured. Was there was a play, I forget which week, but like, remember Debo had hamstring injuries that week. And there was a play where he caught the ball and went out of bounds. And maybe like the step before, the step right after he hit the white line, like he pulled up. That's a visual I would want no part of if I'm the Niners. So as shitty as it would be to risk going three and five, I cannot have him like grade two hamstring out a month, right? Because yeah, okay, you only missed three games out of four, but that's a major blow. Kind of like the Bosa thing. You know, could, if it was the Super Bowl or the NFC Championship game, could he have played the Atlanta Falcon game? Probably, you know, I, I would guess maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. But they gave him the week, and then it looked like, I mean, actually his speed, he was too fast getting up the field, and he used it against him. But, like, he looked pretty normal to me. You know, he had the sack. He just looked like, if you feel like it's that, then I I, I don't know, man. I, I can't risk it. I, I can't. Because the one thing would have been like, well, we pushed the Atlanta game and he's out too much. You'd be like, oh, that's your, you're fucked. Your season's over. You're saying with I wouldn't Debo this week. You would not push it. That's what you're saying. I would have to feel like he's unhurtable, which is clearly n- never a case with a 49er player. I-, I would, if he can't practice all week because it's tight, he ain't playing. Which sucks. Like you said, it's uh, Kyle Shanahan plays in more must-win games on October 30th than any good coach. You know, which is up for debate. Like, he sucks, but you know what I mean. I hundred percent. It, it, it is. It is unbelievable. It is so true. It's like college football level. Must win games in October. Well, it's weird. Like for the Rams, for example, they lose this. Their season is in major trouble. But you go. Well, they've been to multiple Super Bowls. They won one. They've been to the playoffs basically every fucking year. And the one year they missed, they went nine and seven. Like, are they in any must win games this year? I, Sean McVay would say, yeah. Right, they, they you mean just not, for making the playoffs. I, I'm just saying the way they're judged on the outside, right? If they have a eight and nine year, is that big a deal in the no, grand scheme no, of things? No. If Kyle Shanahan has an eight and nine year, is this a pretty That's deal, a big deal. An utter disaster? It's a big deal. And look, here here's the thing. I watched some of Sean McVay, um, his Wednesday press conference, I guess, today. And he feel I'm just watching him. I don't watch him every week, but I see a fair amount of them. He, he he was pretty he was a pretty comfortable guy like he seemed that you know they they're coming off the bye they're three and three I think they feel good we can talk more about them they feel good because they got their center Brian Allen coming back Van Jefferson remember left the Super Bowl celebration because his wife was having a baby had a knee had a knee surgery and he's back this week I don't know if he's going to play yet but he's been a limited participant in practice so they actually feel like they got some good vibes going the Rams. Um, and they you listen like- to Schrager. You listen to Schrager last week with Rasilla. No, he said last week when he flew in, he knew McVeigh was on a buy. He texted him like, "You want to meet up to get a drink?" And McVeigh's like, "Just come over to my house." So he went over to his house, hung out on Saturday. Yeah, and he was kind of reiterating the way you're saying. He's like, "I was expecting him to be kind of down, have some like cocktails, kind of bitching and moaning." He's like, he was in pretty good spirits. Like we've had some injuries. He's like, you know, obviously Stafford's been banged up. He didn't feel like all is lost on the season. That's yeah. I again, he was basically I, saying I've known him for a long time, really and well. I was surprised on his his upbeat energy. That's the vibe. I that mean, Wickersham they, article right says that like you know he's a guy that handles losing not well. He looked fresh to me. 